Hello guys. Happy Tuesday. Hope everyone is well today. I've been having a really good day. Nice and relaxing. Just getting some stuff done though at the same time. I usually uh, spend my morning doing my planner first thing so that I can set some goals for the day, see what I want to accomplish, and then just start checking them off as time goes on. It's usually how I start my day, and I did really good today. Did most of the stuff that I wanted to do. I did want to go outside for a walk, but it's just so smoky here right now that I don't think it's very good for me to even do that. And I know Posh was kind of struggling yesterday in the heat and the smoke, so instead of trying to push it, I thought we would just relax today. Because she's a little old senior, so I know that she can use the R and R for sure. And now, very excited to make some burritos with you guys. This is something that can be made really, really well and very flavorful, or it can just be like really plain and bland. I've had some really good burritos in my time and I've had some like so-so eh, burritos as well. What's up, Death? Welcome in, man. How are you doing today? Glad to see you here nice and early. So that's it for my day. We have quite a few things to get started with today on stream. So there is those chicken carcasses on the stove top there. And then we also have to start pretty quickly here, which I think I'll start that big roaster pot heat it up so that we can get that beef cooking for the pulled or shredded beef later on in stream. So we're going to do it in the oven and we do need to sear it off first. I put it in a little chipotle and achiote marinade this morning. So it's going to be really nice and red when it's finished cooking later on. And since we're doing it low and slow, we need to get it on sooner rather than later. Because if you end up bumping up your heat in the oven, you will end up with a tougher piece of meat. So if you're ever trying to make something pulled or shredded, you always want a nice low heat and that way your meat won't dry out or get tough on you. Welcome back, Box Fetish. Good to see you here. Got the stress of your car being towed off your back today. What the heck? Yesterday, Opterix was like having car issues. He, I think he dished out like 1300 bucks to fix his car. And now your car got towed? What is going on, Death? I've been good, man. You know what? I haven't gone to the farm in like two and a half weeks. And I think having that little bit of time back to myself, as well as like the extra money from paying for gas and stuff like that, I think I really needed that to refocus and spend more time making the stream more awesome, keeping organized and just not feeling so stressed all the time. I always felt like I was in a huge rush when I would go to the farm, even if it was just for that three hours. It's pretty crazy how much you can do in three hours <laughs> when you're left alone. So that is good. Okay, let me turn this pan on here. I'm gonna do like pretty high heat so let's do like medium high I would say I'm just gonna put a little bit of fat in the bottom there and what I'm using for fat you guys don't have to you can use vegetable oil if you want not olive oil though because that doesn't have a very high smoke point, so that won't be good. I have like a container of pork and beef fat stashed in the fridge that I've kept from different cooks. So I'm just gonna put some of that into here. Kind of match that flavor from the meat. So I think it'll make it a little more rich. You definitely want enough to coat the bottom of your pan so that you can get a really nice even sear. So while that's heating up, 
I guess we can quickly prep our beef for searing. So this is what it looks like. It's really nice and red. And before we sear it, we wanna make sure that we kind of dry this off. Otherwise, this is gonna splatter and it might actually burn as well from the high heat. So I think I'll just put a paper towel on the plate here. But I do want to reserve the marinade in the bag because we can pour that back into the cooking pot after the beef has seared. And dang, this smells so good. So have you ever, have you guys ever cooked with chipotle peppers in adobo sauce because that's what I use today for like most of the marinade on the beef I'm just trying to scrape it all off so we don't waste any and then a little bit of lemon juice or lime juice is always a good idea I did some mixed herbs and then like I said achiote paste that's the color of the marinade, guys. Super, super nice. Definitely should not throw that out. And we'll get into what some of those Mexican ingredients are in a little bit here. And I'm gonna preheat the oven right now as well so we can roast off the chicken bones, which these are being processed today so that we can make a chicken broth let it sit for a couple days in the fridge. And then we're gonna use it Thursday to make the chicken and dumpling soup. So that's an important part of that recipe. Okay, Death, I'm gonna read what she said now that we're rolling. Some sheriffs came out to the house and rolled his eyes when he said HOA sent you out. It's like gray law. The tags were expired and car parked on the road. So someone complained enough times. Do people not have anything better to do with their lives? Even if it's on your property, seriously. That's ridiculous, man. Yeah, just glad it's over with. Yeah, there are stupid guidelines in gray law. Totally with you on that. Your rant for the day. <laughs> The meat looks great, thanks. I think it's gonna be really good. This is a top sirloin oven roast that I picked up for 10 bucks on sale at the grocery store a couple weeks back. And so I'm finally cooking it and I thought I would braise it up really nice. So once this is nice and hot, we will put our meat in, but I think it's important that we salt and pepper it a little bit right now that helps to create a really nice crust because the salt does draw out some moisture anchovy paste I am not using any anchovy paste today and keep in mind when you're seasoning this roast is you want a really good amount of salt here because imagine if you were going to divide this up into steaks, you'd probably get three. So imagine the amount of surface area that you usually season the three steaks with. You have to make up for that with this larger piece of meat. Because you need it to be able to penetrate all the way through. Yeah, meat sale, the best. Okay, Matt. Yeah, we're starting with meat. Yeah, maybe two steaks, hey? <laughs> Depending on how big your steaks are. Yeah, maybe one steak. Maybe just one. Yeah, this is the perfect stream for you, Matt. All of the meats everywhere. Okay, I'm just gonna bring this over and put it in the pot and then we'll continue on our little setup for the day. Go over our prep list, our recipes, oh. Our recipes, just shutting 
turn that ringer off. And some fun facts as well. <laughs> I'm not a vegetarian. I don't think I could. That sound though, that's what we want. And I think I'm just gonna put a splash screen so I don't mess up the stove top too much. And I just gotta go quickly this is what Betty says. Please put some twisted teas in the fridge. My mom's niece is visiting us now. She's coming for a week. She just got here today. So I guess she wants some twisted teas. So I'm going to go put those in the fridge before I forget. Taking care of people. And I will be right back. Yeah, <laughs> from my side, man. <laughs> wow. Enjoy the sizzle. There was only one twisted tea and it was already in the fridge. I put some ciders in instead though, because you never know. Let me just tell Betty. Tell her to bring her home drink. <laughs> yeah. Well, she just flew in today. And you gotta treat your guests right. You shouldn't have to pay for anything. Matt, I just saw that you're having a rough day at work. And the last two hours typically do go quick, so I think you'll be fine. Yeah, try not to watch the clock, guys. Isn't that how you're supposed to treat your guests, especially when it's family? Okay, that's sizzle though. I think this is good. See the color when we flip it. Yeah. See that caramelization, guys? That is what we want. You have a list of stuff you want. Yeah, you're family too now. Okay, so burritos today. This was Tristan's request from his donation last week. He's definitely a burrito man. I think he enjoys a good burrito every now and then. And I'm pretty sure I made them for him once before already on stream, but I'm always down to do it again. And I haven't eaten a burrito since that last time, which is probably two or three months ago. <laughs> no death. Well, you might have more bones now. Because you accrue like 40 bones every 10 minutes. There you go, death. So you're almost there again. Okay, so burritos today. I had pulled pork in the freezer already. So I pulled that, like, I pulled 
least six or seven different things. So this is in here. You got a nice layer of fat in the bottom there. And I think it's pretty plain in flavoring. So we might doctor it up a little bit later. And then I also had kind of this shredded beef stuff that Sammy made at one point. That was in the freezer too. So I was like, okay, let's pull this. So really anything like slow cooked is good in a burrito. I've also had like a fried fish burrito, which is really good. And then just a couple of condiments that I kept in the freezer. So salsa verde, homemade and salsa roja. So green and red salsas, traditional Mexican recipes, which I will share later in the stream with you guys. Let me just check this a sec. Oh yeah, we good. Okay, let's turn that off. And we're gonna deglaze the pan now. So what I like to do when I'm braising meat in the oven is use some kind of beer. It can be the cheapest can you have laying around that's just been like sitting there. Um, I'm gonna use a honey brown ale. So a little bit of sweetness in there and it's an amber lager. So it's not too bitter. Since it is a lager, why did I call it honey brown ale then? Honey brown lager. And we're gonna use this to get all of those amazing brown bits off the bottom of the pan. Ah! We're going over and be careful because it might splash. And if you're gluten-free, cider also works really well. So keep that in mind. Just give some meat a little uh, rub around here, try and get everything off. And then we're gonna pour in this little bit of marinade that we saved from the beef. So that's gonna be a lot of flavoring. And mixing it with the beer is gonna make this really nice rich sauce to mix in with the rest of that shredded beef that we already have prepped up. I know, yeah, it's like beer has gluten. part in braising is making sure that your pot is covered so that the steam doesn't escape and that way your sauce doesn't really reduce either so that's a good thing to remember and then I might have to switch the oven wrap around a little bit oh no it looks like it's okay and then we're gonna put the chicken to roast on top so with that cold chicken going into roast the oven's not going to stay that hot. I have it at 425. Once the chicken bones have roasted, I think around half an hour they'll take just to get a nice golden brown, add some flavoring in there, some caramelization for our chicken broth for the soup. Then we'll turn the oven down to like 275 Fahrenheit or 300 Fahrenheit. I always like to braise my meats at 300 Fahrenheit or lower for a longer amount of time. I just find that they turn out a lot better than doing something at like 350 Fahrenheit. So don't rush your braised meats. Yeah, we're doing chicken dumpling soup on Thursday. And this is actually, you're gonna like this. This is a recipe I got from my brewmaster. And I used to work at a brew pub in Vancouver. And he said this recipe has been passed down for like almost 90 years now. So it's really, really good. And I haven't made it since like the winter time. And I really enjoy eating soups in the summer. I find them pretty cooling. 
what's the roulette all about? So if you do the points command, you'll be able to see how many points you have chance and the points or the bones, which is the currency that we call it here in our stream are accrued when you watch the stream and when you follow or donate and stuff like that. And we have a giveaway going on right now for a four pack of salts that are made from the seawater here. So you can use those bones to enter the giveaway and you need a thousand to get one ticket. Okay, let's put all of this stuff in. The oven is just about to tell me it's ready. And then we will go over our prep list. That's a little bit hot already. That way we don't have to worry about it. <laughs> bet it all. Yeah, you can bet it all. And you will win double or you will get zero at the end of it. So choose wisely. You can also bet a little bit at a time too. Have fun with it. It's not real money. That's the fun part. Hello, chef. How are you today, man? Still looking at how to see it. Okay, let me help you out then for a sec. So this, there's the leaderboard if you wanna know where everyone is sitting and how many points you're at. Yeah, shout out to Chef Guy, the fellow cooking streamer in Canada. He just lives over on the mainland there in BC, pretty cool. Okay, so today and let's give I'm gonna give a little shout out to chance so you figured out what you want to request and are you guys ready for this chance has come up with something very interesting for their request so the way they want to do their meal request from their cheer win from last week or the week before even is they want to send me some boxed meals or foods that are like prepackaged, whatever, that don't really go bad. Want me to test those out on stream and then make my own variation of it. Or maybe I'll do them side by side on stream and see what we end up with. So that is really cool. But with that being said, that means that I have to set up a PO box. And I feel like enough people have asked lately to send me stuff that it is a viable option now and it won't really be a waste of money on my end to pay for that box if people do want to send stuff. So I'm gonna get a PO box set up and that way if you guys want to send little goodies or little things to go along with your meal requests, feel free to do so. So I'll keep you guys posted on that. Yeah, I saw you message me back on Twitch. I just haven't read it yet. I will for sure reply after the stream though. <laughs> chef just looked at what I typed. Hello, I am chef and I am high. <laughs> Hilarious. Chance, holy smokes. Another thousand biddies, honestly. Thank you so, so much. You really don't have to do that, but it is definitely appreciated. And I will use those biddies for groceries and stream improvements for sure. Maybe I'll even take that money to go open the PO box. Okay guys, carrying on. So order of prep for the day. We obviously have our pulled beef or shredded beef in the oven already starting to braise it that's going to take anywhere between three and four hours at a nice low temp i usually like to do 300 fahrenheit like i said earlier and at the moment we're roasting some chicken bones to make a chicken broth for thursday's chicken and dumpling soup 
So whenever you're making a soup, I would suggest to take that time, make a quick broth or even a stock if you want. Broths are a little bit easier. There's not really much involved other than whatever chicken bones or beef bones and water, letting that cook. Whereas a stock, you use some veggies, some herbs. It's a little bit more expensive, obviously, and it does take a little bit longer to make really good. So choose what you wanna do. I've made this soup in this way before and it worked out really, really well. So I'm gonna stay with that because I feel like after 90 years, this recipe is tried and true. Trist, you are here and alive. Eating lasagna, yes, man. And Viyun with the five month resub. Thank you, man. How are you today? Every time I see these months counting up on your guys' resubs or even new subs, it's crazy to me. So thank you for all that support. Fam, welcome in, guys. We got some crazy shit going on in here right now. Everyone's just filing in. How was the stream today, fam? And what did you make? Yes, goat. Burritos. So good. Hello, mama. How's it going today? Okay, back to our prep list. So we're making a chicken stock or a broth today on stream. That's just going to sit in the fridge overnight for the next two days. And it should gelatinize, which is exactly what you want it to do. That means there are a lot of flavors that were brought out of the chicken and therefore impart it into your broth, which will help to make your soup really, really tasty. Goat burritos. That would be good. Slow cooked goat. I'd be into it. <laughs> goat king, no goat. That's a nah with the goat. Oh no, fam, it was frustrating. Honestly, I have had streams like that too. I'm sure some people in here remember. <laughs> Not every day is perfect, that's for sure. But you just have to remember to have fun with it. You have to remember why you're doing it. Because a lot of things in life can be frustrating. But it does get easier when you see the happy and fun side of it. You nearly rage quit. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I've definitely had streams like that too. But the fact that you push through that means you're just going to keep getting better. I am good, mama. Thanks for asking. Didn't mean to make Spider-Man cry. Oh, speaking of Spider-Man found a spider in my bedroom today. I just like threw one of my sweaters on the floor the other day and I went to pick it up today. Like as I picked it up, I see this little thing like crawling off my sweater and I was like, eh, I like threw it. <laughs> and then this like pretty big spider just like crawls away off my sweater. I'm like, well, I guess that's why I shouldn't leave clothes laying around. The spiders will get into it. You don't mind screwing up on recipes you know nothing about, but with the things you've made a bunch of times frustrating. Yeah, that's fair. That's really, really fair. And that is the hard thing with cooking, right? But it's good that people can see that cooking and baking can be frustrating because we can't always make it look easy. There has to be those hard times too. Spiders are our friends. It's true. I just don't love them being in my house. I like to keep them contained outside where they're supposed to be. That is epic, fam. Yeah, vegans killing spiders. <laughs> okay, back to our prep list. So we need to prep a bunch of ingredients to put into our burritos. I think that's one of the most fun things about making burritos is you can really cater to your own palate and what you like to put in them. And there are a lot of options. Like a lot of different veggies can be involved, a lot of different sauces as well. 
and cheeses and meats. And if you don't eat meat, then you don't have to put meat in the burrito. A vegetable burrito is totally okay as well. So what we need to do today for our burrito, we need to mandolin some cabbage, dice up some fresh tomatoes, since we don't really have a chunky kind of tomato salsa, it's more smooth and blended. And I always like nice, fresh chunks of tomato in mine, so that is why I'm doing that. We're gonna make some guacamole fresh, shred up some cheese, and you can do whatever cheese you want in there. I think depending on what you're putting in your burrito, you can choose a lot of different cheeses, but today we're just gonna stick with the same mixture we used yesterday in the wife saver, which was aged cheddar and old cheddar. They're really, really good for melting, and when you combine them both together, I really like the flavor, because one's a little bit more sharp and one's a little bit more salty. So really, really good mix. Yeah, Tris, spiders in cold Canada. We have a lot of spiders here called wolf spiders and they get really big, like up to like that size. We have a pretty big one that chills outside of our patio door, just in the top corner. I saw him outside one night on the outside of the house and he is like that big with the legs. He's not a small guy. And you know what? I like having him around. So I never took down his little web and his nest. I like to think that he is protecting us there. But other than the black widow, there are no other spiders that are harmful here in BC. You never leave clothes on the ground in Arizona. There can be scorpion. <laughs> What snake? Beetles and all sorts of things that sting and bite. Terrifying. You're the burrito queen. Yes, I love that. Okay, you guys are going nuts today in chat. I love this. Oh crap, I'm sorry. Hola, how are you? Fresh tomato, definitely. I'm glad you agree, Box. Chef, thanks for the host today, man. Matt, the customers are so angry and pissy today. Is it a full moon or something soon? Because I feel like that tends to happen when something is going to happen in the earth or the world. Or it's, or, you know, it's just like one of those days, man. But I feel ya. And that's why I like to stay back in the kitchen so I don't really have to deal with customers ever like servers do. You have wolf spiders there and they get big. Yeah, they are nutso. I do like them though. I don't mind those guys. Brown recluse spiders. Yep, I'll be glad about that. <laughs> a few in your bathroom. Oh man. Yeah, I find a lot of spiders in the bathroom a lot. Probably because they come up through the drain or something like that. Ugh, who knows? Why are we talking about creepy crawlies yet? Isn't this a cooking stream? Come on. Ah, oh, that's a good idea, Matt. Just flip over your boots and shoes so stuff can't even get in them. Unless it digs through the dirt. I just call it fridge tour. Today would actually be a good day for that. I did some uh, fridge cleaning this morning. Took up some time for sure. Okay, back to our burritos. So we got stopped at shredding the cheese. Then like I said, I'll go over the salsa recipe since I already had them made and frozen and all I did was pull them out. So I'll let you guys know the ingredients that I typically use. And these recipes are near and dear to my heart. I learned them when I helped open a Mexican taqueria at one point with one of my mentors. And one of the owners is actually Mexican. So all of these recipes are tried and true and traditional. So I'm happy to share those with you guys. And they have been adapted to be my own so they're not actually their recipe 
pretty much I never wrote down those recipes. I just remember the ingredients and the quantities that go into them. So then I ended up writing it down for you guys. We also are gonna make up some rice and beans, which because there's so many different add-ins and sauces being put into the burrito already, we're gonna keep that pretty plain in flavor. Maybe we'll add a little bit of cumin and chili powder to complement everything, but not too much more than that. I have seen some Mexican rice and bean recipes with like corn in them and onion and a bunch of different spices, but I don't want to make the burrito too confusing in flavor because there are so many ingredients. So it's nice to have that kind of plain ingredient to balance everything out. The same topic came up last night. What was that? Oh, snakes. Hilarious. Chocolate covered ants. Oh no, now we're into the insects, guys. Okay, after our burrito prep is pretty much good, we're gonna prep our salad after that. And the ingredients in the salad, I wanted to keep pretty traditionally Mexican. So I did a corn, sweet bell pepper and smashed cucumber salad today with a creamy herb dressing you got a gaming date with a friend okay fam well i hope you enjoy your gaming and don't get too down on yourself shit happens in life and it's when you come back and stand up to it is when you just get better every single time so always remember that and it's always good to see you around yeah, let's get started with the burrito now. Never. Okay, and then later on in the stream, obviously we'll cook our rice and beans. We only need about a 20 minute lead time on that. So that will be cooked a lot later. And then we'll also shred up our beef when it is close to being done and then roll up our burritos and have a little tasty taste. There you go, Chance, you have a bunch of points. So you have enough to buy three tickets for the giveaway, if you so desire. Okay, let me get the mandolin. And we're gonna get started. We're gonna have a bunch of bowls with a bunch of different things in them today. <laughs> Lots of different ingredients. dishwasher that awkward moment when hey Meezy how are you yay for bowls yes death so many shout outs and stream today already I love that. I'm doing good, Mies. Thanks for asking. And you know what? I almost forgot to do like our Mexican history and fun facts. So let's do that now. We're still okay for time, guys. Feels good to be back here regularly. You know what? I like it too. There's more and more girls starting to come into the stream. I like it. Just sorting your box collection. <laughs> Epic. Okay, let's get into burritos. Find out what these things actually are. I'm sure all of us in here have hopefully eaten a burrito in their lifetime. Okay, so burrito is a dish in both Mexican and Tex-Mex cuisine. So obviously Tex-Mex is the American version of Mexican food. Or we call it like white people Mexican food. That can also be used. Maybe that's a little bit racist though, so eh. 
we'll call it Tex-Mex. And what the burrito consists of is a flour tortilla with various other ingredients. It's wrapped into a closed ended cylinder that can be picked up in contrast to a taco where the tortilla is simply folded around the fillings. So you would think that a burrito would be less messy than a taco, but typically a burrito is just as messy as a taco. The tortilla is sometimes lightly grilled or steamed to soften it and make it more pliable. And then with that little bit of heat, it helps it stick to itself and stay closed. So I always like when they put the burrito after they are done wrapping it into like a grill or a panini press. I like those little grill marks on it typically. But there's also a wet burrito, which is covered in a red sauce and baked with cheese on top. So that's definitely a lot different than your little handheld burrito. The bottom always falls out or your hand gets full of food. Yeah, that's it. It's like just running down to your elbow. Terrifying. <laughs> it's like nobody watched me eat this right now. There's some crazy shit going on. Ever tried making the burrito with wheat? What do you mean with wheat? I mean, typically it is with a flour tortilla, but I've not made flour tortillas yet, if that's what you're asking. Enchilada. Yeah, enchiladas are pretty similar in the sense, but I feel like enchiladas are usually just rolled, put into a baking pan, and then covered with red sauce and baked with cheese. So very, very similar. Flour tortillas are wheat. Okay, so in Mexico, meat and refried beans are frequently the only fillings. Interesting. So it's very, very plain. Whereas I guess I'm making more of a Tex-Mex one today and adding in a bunch of different stuff. So what it says here in the US or North America, burrito fillings may include a large combination of ingredients such as Mexican style rice or plain rice, boiled beans or refried beans. So I'm just gonna put some black beans into the rice today. They're not gonna be refried. You can do shredded lettuce or cabbage, different salsas, meats, guacamole, which I think is definitely a must. Cheese, you can do sour cream if you want it creamy and various vegetables. Burrito sizes vary greatly and some can be very large, like a couple pound worth of food, usually in your hand at one time, which is so excessive. Like, why do you have to make burritos that big? The local taqueria here only puts refried beans, meat, cilantro, and onion. Oh, that would be so good. That's one thing I definitely miss is working at the taqueria. We'd have some pretty epic staff meals. Okay, the word burrito means little donkey in Spanish, being the diminutive form of burro or donkey. When you apply that to the dish, it possibly derives from the tendency for burritos to contain a lot of different things, similar to how a donkey would be able to carry a lot of stuff for you. That's very interesting. I am uh, intrigued at how they came up with that name. Just bean and meat. Yeah, what? I want salsa, guac, cheese, sour cream, tomato, everything else. Yeah, yeah. It's like a full meal just wrapped up in a tortilla. That's all. That's all it is. So, so good. Okay, so history for the burrito. Before the development of the modern burrito, the Mesoamerican people of Mexico used corn tortillas in 10,000 BC to wrap foods with fillings of chili peppers, tomatoes, mushrooms, squash, and avocados. Historically, the Pueblo peoples of the southwestern US also made tortillas filled with beans and meat sauce and prepared much like the modern burrito. But these preparations could also be said 
to be the origin of the simpler taco rather than the modern burrito. So what they're saying is that the burrito actually came first and then the taco was developed later on afterwards. So the precise origin of the modern burrito is not known. Some have speculated that it may have originated with vaqueros, which were the cowboys of northern Mexico in the 19th century. In 1895, the burrito or the taco was identified as a regional item from the Mexican state of Guana, Guanajuato. Interesting. So 1985. That's some cool stuff. So I think our burrito is probably most similar to one that you can find in like California or the West Coast of North America. Just because there's so many nice fresh ingredients in there that can be produced locally. You need to figure out where you can buy potato bugs. There's lots of potato bugs here and ants. You know where to get the crickets. Can you not just pick them from outside? <laughs> I've never cooked with bugs before. Yeah, you get to know how to cook the food and now the history, which I think is a really fun part. And it's also important to know what you're cooking especially from the other cuisines in the world. It's important to know that history and where it came from and really give recognition to the dish as it's been developed over the years. Guys, I'm always down for a good breakfast burrito too with like hash browns, eggs, whether it's like bacon or sausage and cheese. I think I've even had a breakfast burrito before with like little tater tots in there. So, so dirty. You wouldn't be able to find enough potato bugs yet. You'd be digging all day. <laughs> Whoa, Vion, look at that. Okay, Mexican cuisine. We'll do a little bit of this. I'm not super worried about the rest of the stream. It's just a lot of veggie prep and stuff. Now that the meat is in the oven and slow cooking, there's not too much else to worry about today. So we're gonna take a little bit of time and learn about what we're making. So Mexican cuisine began about 9,000 years ago when agricultural communities such as the Maya formed and they domesticated maize, a.k.a. corn, creating the standard process of corn nixtamalization. So the corn is soaked and cooked in an alkaline solution, washed and then hulled. And that's what you usually get like grits from or masa for the tortillas. So nixtamalization with an alkaline solution. And this established their food ways. Successive waves of other Mesoamerican groups brought with them their own cooking methods. Very cool. <laughs> Sorry, you don't have enough points. Oh, you should have enough points, though, by the 31st of the month to get at least one ticket in there. So the Mexican establishment of the Aztec Empire created a multi-ethnic society where many different foodways became infused. The staples of the native foods are corn, obviously, is the biggest one, beans, squash, amaranth, which is a grain, chia, avocados, tomatoes, tomatillos, which is used in the salsa verde, cacao, aka what we get chocolate from, vanilla, agave, which is a sweetener, 
from a plant and that's also used to make tequila. Turkey, I guess turkeys run wild in Mexico, that's pretty cool. Spirulina, sweet potato, cactus and chili pepper. So a lot of different ingredients in Mexican food and a lot that I really like to use, which I think is why I like to cook Mexican food and eat it a lot. So after the Spanish conquest of the Aztec empire, which was in like 1521, so way, way early, Europeans introduced a number of other foods, the most important of which were meats from domesticated animals. So instead of just turkey, the Mexicans had beef, pork, chicken, goat, and sheep as well. They also got their dairy products, such as cheese and milk, and also rice. While the Spanish initially tried to impose their own diet on the country, this was not possible. So African and Asian influence were also introduced into the indigenous cuisine. That's our half an hour timer for our chicken bones. Let me just have a little peek here. They're getting there. I think maybe 10 more minutes. And then we should be good. Okay, so African and Asian influences were also introduced into the indigenous cuisine during this era as a result of African slavery in New Spain. Interesting. And then over the centuries, this resulted in regional cuisines based on local conditions. So obviously different areas in a country can grow different things. So that is why the cuisine is then regionalized. Yeah, where in India are you? That is so cool. That is definitely near the top of my list of places to go and explore. So, so cool. You can't get the prize even if you win. How come? I'm down to send it to India. <laughs> what is flavored sea salt? So the flavoring is put into the sea salt during the process of obviously making the salt, cooking out the liquid or the water from the salt. And there's a company here where I live that makes their own salt from the seawater here, which is really, really cool. And so they make different little flavorings like sun-dried tomato and basil. And this one, which is really, really nice, sweet and smoky maple. So there's some nice maple sugar in there. And I like to support a lot of local foods and drinks and stuff like that. So I thought I would do a little giveaway with some amazing salts that are made locally here. Hey, Kiko's sister, how are you? Okay, so that's it for Mexican cuisine. Let's get into prepping our veggies and stuff for the burrito fillings. And I feel like everything else will just kind of work itself out. So I got my mandolin here and we're gonna use this twice today. First on the cabbage so that we can get it shaved really nice and thin. I thought since we're making a salad to go with the burritos today, we don't really need to put lettuce in the burrito. And I like that little extra crunch from the cabbage. It sounds smart. Yeah, it is really, really cool. It's a really easy way to put extra flavor into your food if you don't have those ingredients all the time. And I'm gonna use purple cabbage today, guys. Really nice and colorful. I have half a head here that we do have to trim up a little bit first. I might only use a quarter of it though anyways. Thank you. 
You live in a coastal city. That is so cool. I'm just going to trim this side off that was cut recently. It's just a little bit browned. So I'd rather not serve that today. Yeah, I always like to uh, learn from or I guess learn about where my viewers are from. It's very interesting to me. So thanks for sharing. Don't feel obligated to share if you don't want to. I mean, your privacy is your own thing. But it's cool when you get viewers from other parts of the world, for sure. Okay, we got five minutes left on our timer for those chicken bones. And I'm gonna set this mandolin to a very, very thin setting. Mandolins are great for vegetable prep. And before we start, we need to cut this cabbage core out. That's a really tough part of the cabbage. It's not very flavorful. And I usually just kind of angle the knife so that you're able to cut that whole core out. And then you just have the nice cabbage prepped up. You live in a city called Chennai, AKA Madras. Like Madras curry. I need to look this up. This is cool. You're way in the south, hey? That is so cool. Three tickets in the bank. Yes, Vune. Ah, sorry about that. Okay. Let's start slicing this. Hopefully we get some really nice thinly shredded cabbage. Yes. It's like almost paper thin. And obviously be very careful when you're using the mandolin. You don't want to lose any digits or even shave off any fingerprints. Hey, Scrump Dilly. It's been a while. Welcome back. You love the Mexican restaurants around there in Austin. You like Tex-Mex, burritos, tacos, guaco, rice and beans, yes. I know I do love Tex-Mex and Mexican food. I think it was a good call to only do a quarter of the cabbage head. This is what it looks like. And that way you're not crunching down on like really big, awkward pieces of cabbage. So this is the thing when you make something so simple like a burrito is you should definitely take the time and care to prepare your fillings and all your different add-ins properly. But I guess if you don't have time, it's totally okay to just throw it together. I just like to show you guys how to elevate it. You need to buy a mandolin. Yeah, they're so, so handy. I'm gonna use the guard now so I don't take my hand off. Nice chance. Thanks for buying a ticket and good luck. Hey, Weedle! Good to see you in here as well. Welcome back, guys. For those of you have, that have been away for a little bit. It's always good to see those old faces in here. <laughs> Thank you for the guard. You were scared. I know I hate when it starts to stop halfway. Don't worry, it freaks me out too. And then when we get to the end, obviously that's not going to push through. 
So do your best and just use your knife to slice it as thin as you can. I'm just gonna go quickly rinse this off so that we can use it a little bit later in stream. Yeah, this, so this mandolin is called a Borner, if you can see the name up there. It's a German mandolin and I really like it. So the way that the guard works is you push this in. If you push it all the way, then the blade is safe. You're not gonna cut yourself. And then it has a couple different settings for the thickness. I really like that. And then it also does come with this little kit here, which is like a julienne attachment or for making fries and stuff, right? So it's really, really handy. And I feel like it's really safe because of how this guard is designed is you're never gonna cut your hand off. And this is how the underside is. So it just presses right into the food. So feel free to check this out. It's a little bit of money, but I think it's worth it for sure. Okay, awesome. We have like 30 seconds left on our chicken bones. And then we can turn our oven all the way down to like 275 Fahrenheit. And we can slow cook the beef for the remainder of the stream. Chicken. South Indian foods still aren't even popular yet? Huh, interesting. Well, maybe I can get a recipe from you and try it out if it's not that popular. Change the world. Okay, so chicken bones, a little bit golden brown on top, that's all we're looking for. And this big pot here on the stove is where those guys are going. But first, we got to turn this oven all the way down. I'm going to do like 280. Okay, let's finish filling up our bowl with the cabbage. Yeah, butter chicken, definitely unhealthy, <laughs> but it tastes so good. And yeah, definitely one of the most popular things here in America, as far as Indian food goes. I'm just gonna flip this over and give it a little choppy chop. Hello, Othrix. How are you today? Welcome in. Out chicken 65 oh my gosh I love dosas so dosas are a southern Indian thing dosas are unreal hey guys there's our lovely shaved cabbage to go into there later let me just pack up this cabbage and then we will carry on with our chicken broth. So you just need to add those chicken bones to the pot and cover it with cold water is really important. And the cold water helps to keep it nice and clear. Whereas if you add in hot water right away, it's gonna pull a lot of impurities out of the bones from the chicken and it's gonna go more cloudy. So if you want a really nice clear soup or a broth always do cold water that's what we learned in culinary school yatris totally i don't think i've ever met someone that doesn't like a burrito you eat dosa every day and pair it with peanut chutney i love peanuts and i also love chutney so if you have like a solid recipe that you always use 
or even something for me to reference, I think I would like to make that or at least try to. Yoon, you don't like burritos. I don't know if you're lying or not. Oh yeah, grilled cheese sandwiches. I almost forgot about that. I'm gonna write that one down right now while that's filling. Cause that's a good one. I love cheese and I love grilled cheese. can deep fry a burrito. Oh yeah. So deep fry a burrito, make it really, really crispy. And that's what they call chimichangas. Which I don't think I've ever had a chimichanga in my lifetime yet. Peanut chutney. You'll get the recipe from your mom? Yes. I love family recipes like that. Your perfect grilled cheese has bacon bits, minced onions, and garlic with mayo on the bread and cooked in herb butter. You're dirty, Death, and I like it. Dessert grilled cheese, meat grilled cheese, vegan grilled cheese, farm grilled cheese. What does that mean? Whoa, you've never had bacon? This is shocking. Yeah, dirty grilled cheese. Grilled cheese is not diet food. So you're either all in or you're all out. <laughs> There's nothing healthy about it. Okay, we did our cabbage. Let's dice up some tomatoes and get making our guac, which 
I found a new product at the store the other day because I was just sick of buying like unripe avocados all the time and having to wait like a week for them to ripen. So what they have at the supermarket now is frozen avocado pieces. So I decided to pick up a bag. So let's pull some out now so they can thaw up a little bit. I do have one fresh avo here that is ripe that we'll make with the guac and then the rest will substitute with that frozen stuff and see how it tastes and see how the product is. So that's a pretty genius way to sell avocados. It's already ripe, it's already pitted and peeled and kind of portioned for you instead of them always going bad on you really quick. Thick tortilla spread butter with cinnamon and sugar and roll it up. Oh my God, Trist. Farm grilled cheese is like all green farm produce. Oh, interesting. I like that. So here's this. Massive bag of nice avos. So all I'm gonna do is fill up this container, I think. Naughty grilled cheese, go to your room, Matt. Get going to your room. Look guys, it's already diced. This is freaking awesome. Diced frozen avo. Yeah, this is a first for me. But I think it's a pretty smart preparation. Yeah, I've never seen it. I saw it last week at the grocery store, so I thought I'd try it. Put those aside to thaw up. And let's get into some tomato action. Put not ripe avocado into the paper bag. Oh yeah, I always forget that trick. It's like, that's why they give you the paper bags in the grocery store, in the produce aisle. You finally cleaned out your coffee bean containers. You could see the oil building up. Oh, I hate when that happens. That's hilarious doesn't look so good right now. Yeah, I mean, it's frozen. So it's definitely not the most appetizing looking, but I just wanna see how the product is. What's wrong with fresh avocado? Because all of the avocados at the store when I was there on Sunday were all super, super green, and I knew they wouldn't ripen in time for the stream today, because that's only two days. So I decided to try that, just to make sure that I could make guac with you guys. I don't really think it's a bad thing. I'm not pureeing the tomatoes, Matt. I have a tomato salsa already made up that I pulled from my freezer. Salsa roja. Really nice roasted tomato salsa and I like fresh tomato as well in my burrito so we're just gonna dice some of these up keep everything nice and bite size so that it's easy to roll up your burrito later and I think the struggle with trying to roll up a burrito is that most people just put way too much stuff inside and try and instead of trying to stuff one tortilla full, why not just put a little bit less and have two tortillas? Unless you're like really watching your carbs. You can smell. Oh yeah, I forgot that you hate tomatoes. Oh Matt. Tomato chunks so good. Oh, this knife is a shun. 
I would say it's a really good chef knife if you want something that is reliable and stays sharp. If you go onto my channel page, at the bottom of the page is like my cooking tools and it's linked in there if you want to check it out. Hard to get perfect avos in places where they're not grown. Exactly. Exactly. I'm not going to use this big bowl. I think this will all fit in this guy. Just make your own super tortilla. Yeah, or you can do that. Thanks, Trist, for that. Okay, now to wipe up all of the tomato juice. Let's give these a try, too. Now they pretty much taste like cardboard. Those ones were store-bought. Wait, what's exploding? Oh, the burrito chance? <laughs> burrito explosion, yeah, halfway through eating it. And then you're just covered. That's why they always give you lots of napkins, though. Hi, Sammy. How are you? Or actually, no, mom's getting the stuff today. Oh, okay. Yeah, so sorry. Oh, I was trying to tell you. Perfect. Even better for me. Hey, that was unboxed. I don't know what that was. Okay, on to shredding our cheeses. Yeah, I wonder about the oxidization, hey? Well, it said there's citric acid on there. So that will probably help a lot with them turning brown when it thaws out. Let me just grab the cheeses, guys. The cheeses. You always freak out when your cell phone starts broadcasting severe flooding alerts. Really? Are you getting a bunch of rain there now, Dr. X, or what? lot of rain today. Okay. The knife's a little expensive for you, but since today's your birthday, well, happy birthday. Oh crap. That's awesome. You're gifting yourself this knife. I don't think you will be disappointed. I've had this knife for three, four years now already. And I've not had like any issues with it. Really, really enjoy using it. And yeah, let's hope that the customs don't seize that. They really don't have a reason to. It's a chef's knife. Oh, death. It is so bad with the smoke here now. It's just really settled in. And I'm sure it's, it's definitely even worse where chef is in Vancouver. Okay, let's cut off some cheesems. Let's maybe do like a cup of each one and then mix them together. So the white cheddar that's aged is always more crumbly, but it's always more salty as well. It's really, really good. And this is a nice English one. You have Victorinox knives. I also have a bunch of Victorinox. So I either have like pretty expensive knives or like just your run of the mill knives. And you know what? Both of them 
work great, I would say. I have no problems with my Victorinox. I love them. Hey, Mike, how are you? Yeah, guys, happy birthdays. Oh, yeah. Like, even yesterday when I took Posh for a walk, I was having a headache on the way home because we were out for like a good 45 minutes. I was like, why do I have a headache? Like, that's a rare thing for me. And then I just saw how smoky it was on the horizon. I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> all of this smoke that I'm definitely not used to breathing. Oh my gosh, Death, thanks for gifting the sub to Ocraft. Little birthday sub action. Thank you, thank you. And while both of you are in here, Death and Opterix, do you guys want to decide the cookie flavors that I make Thursday for you? Or can we do a little straw poll and see what everyone else votes? I have four different options. Straw poll? Straw poll. It's a little poll that people can answer on. Oh. You just post the link. It's really fun. It was not a headache, it was me sobering up. Good one, Matt. Sammy, you need, you need to show off what you got? No. Got a wild Sammy. Look at this one, though. You went to the barber shop last yeah. night? Kate's barber shop. Wow. So what did <laughs> you get in the Amazon package? I got a hammer. He got a hammer. He's really happy about it. It's a hammer. Is it a girl hammer? It's not a girl hammer. Okay, so he got not a girl hammer. <laughs> Which I guess my dad made fun of him for having a girl hammer the other day. Yes, Omat! Straw pull! Straw Are pull for the cookies I'm making for sure. Death and Opterix. Okay. Let's go here, 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 here. So. okay, Mike. You are going to ask if I could be as proficient as I am at cooking in any other field. What would it be? Well, I do have pretty big passion still for like health and fitness. So I'd probably go two routes. Either like be a nutritionist or a personal trainer and help people that way. Or I really enjoy like something like massage therapy and like helping people take care of their bodies, whether they're injured or not. So I think that would be the other route that I would go and really enjoy it. <laughs> oh my god, it's true, Matt. I forgot that you were getting your hair cut the other day too. Make bean boozled cookies. Maple flavored. Okay, well, did they answer? Death and Opterix, do we want to do the straw pull for your guys' cookies, or do you guys want to pick your own flavors? Cricket flour, that's epic. Yeah, I would like to do some weed butter cookies, but I just can't yet because it's not entirely legal here. And I don't want to get in trouble. We can choose. Okay, so the good news here is that both Death and Opterix have decided that they will like any cookie that I make. So you guys aren't picky about your cookies. You might just be cookie monsters then. And yeah, plus you can't ship the weed cookies either. That would be sad. Guys, Chef is texting me. This is what he asked. You still want that beef blade? I asked him to order some beef ribs for Sammy to smoke. Gotta say yes. I guess he's doing an order today. Yes. Okay. Hold on a sec.
There is the link, my peeps. Get on in there. If you guys want to have a part in deciding what cookies will be sent out, probably on Friday to Death and Authorix. And that is how I want to give them recognition for giving so many gifted subs in the channel. I very much appreciate that. Sam, you want Triple A Alberta or Pemberton grass fed? Oh, Matt, what is yours? What did you get into? Sammy, what does that say on the screen beside you? What kind of cookies? Chocolate and cricket flavor? Oh, Maple? No. Bean boozle? Onion? Terrible. Terrible options. <laughs> Bean boozle. Maple cookie's a thing. Maple cookie is a thing. And they're shaped like maple leaves. You don't like oatmeal cookies, so you chose that, Matt. Man, some people love oatmeal raisin. They are really nice and moist. And it's so true. You can make any flavor into a cookie. Yeah, with no sugar. Ollie says the grass is more expensive, so... Uh, this side. Death is making you look bad. Death is the man. If you don't like death, there's a problem. Baloo flavored cookies. Vune, you can take that suggestion elsewhere. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Oh, no. Oh, we're back. When you plug that in, things went weird. Oh. Okay. The monitor there. just shut off for a sec. Oh, it did. So I was like, oh no. Just it. There goes the stream. There goes the stream. The tree fell down somewhere. <laughs> Curry cookies. Hey, Jalal. Yeah, welcome to Cheese Mountain. Two days in a row is where we're at guys so now maybe we'll just leave these separate instead of mixing them so people have a choice of what cheese they want whether they want one that's more creamy or more sharp and salty oh matt yeah you popped in to say hi on a tuesday that's freaking awesome dude how have you been and it's totally fine if it's a little bit short you know that Okay, so we got our cabbage and cheese that can go into the fridge along with our diced up tomato. Salted caramel chip. I guess that's the winner, guys. And I am totally into that. Oh, Matt, just so you can see <laughs> my face. <laughs> You're welcome. Have a wonderful night, man. And thanks for popping in when you can. We miss ya. It's good to see ya. And I hope you are well. Stay thick, my friend. Pumpkin spice cookies. We'll leave those, Trist, until like October when everything is pumpkin spice flavored. Everything. <laughs> okay, just going to pop this stuff into the fridge. Molasses cookies, yes. <clears throat> Ginger molasses cookies, so, so good. Okay, so our avo is still thawing and our chicken broth just came up to a simmer. So let's turn that all the way down now. We want a really nice low simmer. So what is left on our list? Okay, I can quickly go over the salsa recipes with you guys. You need to make some no-bake cookies. That is always a good thing. Peanut butter cup cookies. Yeah, just put a Reese's cup right in the middle. Double chocolate bananas. Oh yeah, I haven't made those ones yet, Death. 
Okay, let me just uh, text Chef back. Are those no-bake ones, the ones with peanut butter, chocolate, and rolled oats? I've done those before. Those are really handy, yet dangerous to have around in the freezer. Remember the peanut butter, chocolate, oatmeal balls? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Macadamia nut cookies are good, but expensive. Yeah, exactly. I was going to put that on there, but since I have to, or since I am paying to ship them, Trying to keep them a little bit lower in the cost range. There's your first recipe. Okay, Matt, let's check this real quick. I don't know why that's opening up in a different tab. Yum, those look so good, dude. I'm down. And yeah, no baked cookies, so easy. There's only one baked good that's even worth mentioning. Yeah, screw the rest. Canadian butter tarts. <laughs> Vune, I love you. You're the best for that. Okay. So salsa recipes. They are posted in Discord, guys, for you there. My homemade guac and the salsa verde and the salsa roja. So salsa verde is the green one. And the base of it is tomatillos, onion, and garlic. And those three things get put into a little pot with water. And you bring that up to a boil, and you only boil it for a couple of minutes until the tomatillos are softened. And then you let that sit, cool off a little bit, add in half a bunch of fresh cilantro, one jalapeno with just the stem taken off, seeds kept in for that little bit of kick if you want and then the juice from two limes put that into a blender as well as the tomatillo onion and garlic taken out of the liquid and then you're gonna reserve that boiling liquid liquid and add enough into the blender to make your salsa nice and smooth and then you just season it afterwards definitely with salt and pepper Can you just end the giveaway now? No, we still got like half a month to go. Okay, so that's our salsa verde. Really, really nice and fresh recipe. And Betty calls this stuff crack because you can pretty much put it on anything. It's really good with eggs as well. If you want a sauce with your breakfast in the morning, always a good option. And now our salsa roja or the red salsa, you need about six Roma tomatoes. Again, half a white onion, <clears throat> a jalapeno with the stem removed, and then a guajillo chili dried, which I will just pull out right meow. As this is what dried chilies look like. They might be a little difficult for you to find. Guys, nice wins. Get in there. This is what dried chilies look like. And then what I like to do to kind of prep them is to quickly roast that chili, which you need to roast the tomatoes, onions, and jalapeno anyways until they're a little bit charred. because that's gonna create a lot of flavor. And roasting the dried chili actually helps to soften it up. I'm still gonna add a little bit of garlic into here and cilantro, and then put that all in a blender and blend it with either water or some kind of vegetable broth. And then again, taste it and add your salt and pepper at the end. And those are two really traditional salsa recipes. Hello, Tom, how are you? So that is that. We can prep up now our rice and beans. So we're just gonna measure out some rice, drain the black beans from the liquid in the can. And then 
if we want to, I can take some of the liquid out of the chicken broth that's going to cook the rice with. That will add some nice flavoring. Or we can just cook it with water and keep it nice and plain. Since there will be a lot of other flavoring going on in the burrito. Sammy's back salt. No, I'll save that just for you, Matt. Maybe I'll put some of that in to the giveaway if you win. <laughs> wow, Jalel, thank you for that. I will take that compliment. I mean, there's a lot of different variety in cooking streams on Twitch. Honestly, I like to stay really professional with you guys and make sure that I explain everything properly because my role here is to teach you guys how to cook this awesome food for yourself at home so that you're not stuck paying those outrageous prices in the restaurants for something that's only mediocre. And that way you actually learn some new skills that hopefully you can share with other people as well. Matt, I'm gonna give you some of Sammy's back salt if you win the giveaway. Yeah, my apron game. It's worth the money. Okay, into our rice and beans. So we have one extra person eating with us today. But since we're adding the black beans and we have a bunch of other stuff for the burrito, I think I'm just going to cook the typical two cups of rice grains and four cups of liquid. Bath salt. No, back salt. <laughs> Hilarious. So I like to use jasmine rice. I don't think it matters too much which rice you use in the burrito, as long as you don't overcook it and make it mushy. So I like to keep my rice kernels nice and fluffy when I cook them, and I think that's important. Who's doing bath salts yet? Everyone, what what is going on here right now? Whoa, nice vegan gelato. <laughs> As Matt just loses all of his bones. Bath salt cookies. You never know. I think I got a sneeze coming in. Maybe not. Yeah, you started something again. Classic Matt. But I thought that was your role anyways, was to like be the party starter in stream. So like I said, we're not gonna cook the rice until we're about, let's say half an hour out from eating, but it's good to just prep up and measure out the ingredients ahead of time. That way when it comes to cooking it, you can quickly do it later on. There's that. Guys, we're opening a can of beans. Esculptura. Just saw you were in here. How's it going? Oh. What's going on here? There we go. Bath beans. <laughs> Gambling's not for you. Well, it's not real money. It's like this fake little currency that we have in this channel. And it is fun to play with. used in the burrito really makes a difference here either guys ass in a can why matt yeah beans make you too okay that's why you call it that that's fair i'm just gonna pour them into this colander over the sink because there is all of this liquid in here that we don't want and if we put that into the rice it's gonna make the rice this really awful kind of brown black color so let's not. I don't have a pressure cooker, but I'm going to show you my way of cooking rice on the stovetop that is pretty much foolproof. Yeah, bean juice. 
you're all right. You assume you're just tired and sad. You had to break up with your fiance because you lost all feelings for her. What? That's some intense shit. Well, let us know if you need an ear to talk to. I know that at least myself does care about your well-being and maybe a couple of the mods are willing to speak with you as well because I know some of us in here are like advocates for mental health. So let me know if you need anything. And if not, at least or hopefully you can move on to some better things. Okay, just going over. There's our beans and because they're canned that means they're already cooked so we don't have to add that to the rice right away the beans can be added when the rice is pretty much done cooking and that way they'll just soften up a little bit and then we can mix them in unless you want the beans to really fall apart and get kind of refried in with the rice then you can add them right away but it just might discolor the rice and make it not look so good Okay, I'm just gonna go take a quick bathroom break and then we're gonna carry on with our burrito prep. Actually, sorry, we're gonna move into our salad now. So side dish, it's 4.15. I think we're doing really well so far. Black beans are your kryptonite. I don't eat them that often, but they are really good for you. Lots of good protein and carbs there. Group P, let's go, Matt. <laughs> Honestly, chef, there's 600 wildfires across BC. I didn't know it was that bad, but this totally makes sense now why we are in a haze. Wow, Sammy, lost all your bones. Now what? Hey guys, we are here. You love just about every other bean. You just hate black beans though. <laughs> Weird. Beans make us gassy. Yeah, a lot of people have a hard time digesting beans. So be careful. Canada has not legalized weed yet. Apparently October is the month 
when that's going to happen if everything goes well. After five months of watching, you just realize that I say bathroom, but most of the Canadians you know say washroom. <laughs> I don't know. I'll call it baño today then, since we're doing Mexican food. I don't know, I've always said bathroom. Bathroom, washroom, the loo, the toilet, which is like a really good UK one. I'm gonna go to the toilet. Weird. Excellent, yeah, visiting your cousins there in Toronto next year. It will be perfect. Okay, so our salad. Corn, sweet peppers, and smashed cucumber, which I've never done the cucumber like this, so I'm really interested. Maybe we'll use Sammy's new hammer to smash the cucumber. Should be fun. Shitter commode. Yeah, to the John. <laughs> oh yeah, wash closet. That was always confusing when I was traveling. Do you know where the wash closet is? Like what? Or yeah, water closet, either one. So we need to prep up some salad greens today. Remember, I used most of them from the garden yesterday, so I don't really have too much to pick for this, but that's okay. I still have some local greens that we need to wash up, make the base of the salad, and then we'll prep the rest of the veggies for our garnish. The commode, I've never heard that one. Bathroom in Spanish is choro. I thought it was baño. Or maybe, I don't know. I thought it was baño. El baño. The room that shan't be named. Welcome in, Nike. We're in the middle of a toilet talk. The porcelain king. I could see that, Matt. Oh, actually. I'm gonna go grab a bowl from upstairs that Betty brought back from Mexico. And we're gonna do our salad in this today because it's so nice and colorful. So I will be right back. And update on the avos, they're still pretty frozen. So we'll get to those whenever they're thawed. This is the one. Look at this little platter thing. Thought this would be awesome to put the salad into. <laughs> Nike. This is a shit convo. I love it. Uh, why do we have two of everything? It's true. My OCD got the best of me. Because a lot of this stuff on that shelf is kept in the storage room on the other side of the basement. And so instead of me walking over there every couple of days, I just kind of stock up. Salad time, yep, exactly. Yeah, the platter is really nice and it's super light. It's like some kind of wood that's just glazed and painted. I do love salsa verde. Yeah, I said it was comparable to crack. We gotta spin some greens. Yeah, good thing you leave in seven minutes, Matt. Perfect timing then, man. Finishing off 
these lettuces today means I'm going to be able to plant them into the garden because they come with their roots still intact. So if you don't cut them all the way down to the core like this one, you can see that little sprout there in the middle? That will actually regrow if you plant this whole thing in the garden after. So that's what we've been doing. And the lettuce in the garden now is like three months old from the last time we did this. And this lettuce definitely has seen better days. So I'm just gonna start by picking off the rusty pieces. Salsa aguacate, what one is that box? Coconut water, your uncle has a coconut tree farm? That is amazing, I am pretty much obsessed with anything coconut. And yeah, I put the coconut water in our smoothies in the morning. Start the day nice and hydrated. Every time you visit, you fill up a two liter bottle to the brim with coconut water and get cocoa drunk. Unreal. None of the lettuce is any good. Nah, we just had to pick it. Look, it's perfect now. Oh, the Witcher series. I really like watching Sammy play that game. I think I could play it as well. It would keep me entertained. Yeah, Yennefer. Yes, honestly, vegan. Half the time, if you just ask how people prepare their food, they will tell you. Okay, cut our greens off. So if you leave something like that, you'll be able to regrow your lettuce. So I always just kind of set these aside and go out to the garden after stream and put them in the dirt. So that is what we will do. You're going to start your goodbyes early because we're prepping veg now, Matt. Oh my God, iceberg lettuce. Does that even count as lettuce? Like how do people still eat that other than like being put on burgers? That's literally just water. Just like home brewing, exactly. So I think this head of lettuce is like over a week old now, which is why it's wanting to go bad like this but I've definitely seen it worse. And I find it's pretty easy to just pick through it when it's all bunched up like this, rather than cutting all the leaves off and then going through it afterwards. Because half the time it's just the outer leaves that are wanting to go bad. And all of the stuff on the inside is still awesome. Viewn, you're gonna continue playing your new game. Monster Hunter, awesome. Sammy says, so good. Well, enjoy your game, Viewn. Thanks for being here for a little bit. And hopefully I'll see you later in the week. Have a great night. Okay, this leaf, only the tip of it was bad. And I think we're all touched up here now. All right, bye, Matt. Have a good one as well. Try and come back to the stream later when we're plating up the burritos. I think you'll enjoy it.
Ooh. Try not to grab the knife by the blade. Okay, so see how this one where I cut it is like looks like just the root end. That one I cut too far, but these other two will definitely regrow. Which is super cool. Just a little note if you guys are ever able to buy head lettuce with the roots still on. Try something new. Maple and onion cookies on the tie. What? You're wildin'. Yeah, onion cookies. That is new to me. And so much love goes into all of the food, or at least it should. It's like the secret ingredient. Okay, going over to give this a little wash, and then we'll spin out all the water so that the dressing can stick on. Where go? Outside. Are Saturn peaches good for making preserves? Are those like the little donut ones that are really flat? I don't really know if they're good for making preserves, but they're so good on their own. I've only had them a couple times. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can honestly preserve anything. Boil them down and see what happens. Yeah, same here, boss. It wouldn't even live long enough to make preserves out of it. I'm impressed right now, vegan. I'm impressed. So I always like to just tear up the bigger pieces of lettuce. What is this rotating thingy? This is called a salad spinner. So perforated little thing on the inside that spins and then look at how much water it just spun out of the lettuce. So if we have all of that water on the lettuce when we go to dress the salad later, the dressing likes to wash off because oil and water do not like each other. So this helps to just dry the lettuce and prepare it for dressing. Yeah, spin the salad, win a prize. I love that. If only they made like a little ticker on the outside of the salad spinner. You just doing a goosey or just going down Phillips? No, I'm gonna do Harbor. Okay. Have a good ride. Yeah. Be careful. Vegan gelato. The two month resub. Thank you, thank you. Two months already. Thanks for everything and happy to have you here. Even though your name was so deceiving at first, we we're like, oh, another vegan. No, you know what? We've gotten better with the vegans over the last couple months. So 
always good to have you. Love the combo that you add to the chat. So thanks for sticking around. Okay, let's empty out that excess water that we got out of the last lettuce and do a second round. And then onto the other veggies. I think burritos can be obviously really heavy to eat. So that's why I decided to pair a salad with dinner tonight. Especially in the summer when it's really hot and I find that the heat kind of affects your appetite or you don't want to eat as much. So it's always good to put some nice fresh veggies on the side. And plus it helps with digestion. You won't feel as heavy after you eat. You gotta keep up with death. Oh, Opteryx gifted the sub. Damn, dude. Wasn't paying attention. I just saw that. Thank you. Yeah, death's at 17, you're at 13. Thank you guys. Honestly, we're making cookies on Thursday on stream. And then I'll let them cool, put them in the freezer for you guys so they stay really fresh and then I'll send them on Friday. Subsumption. Or maybe sending them on Friday is not a good idea. Do you think that the mail gets sent during the weekend or will they just sit there in the freaking post office? Because that would be not so good. I've actually not watched Cowspiracy, Harry. I definitely should though. I do like those food documentaries. And they are highly educating, but you have to keep an open mind as well, where those are usually like one sided, right? So definitely do your research before you believe everything that you see on TV. But yeah, that would be a great watch for anyone that wants to learn a little bit more about how our food and more. More importantly, our livestock is raised. Okay, salad base is prepared. I think there's enough for like eight-ish portions there. I do have some corn going into the salad, guys. And corn isn't the best to eat raw. So I always like to cook it a little bit, whether you just like char it up in a pan or roast it quickly in the oven. It's always a good idea and it will just bring out the sweetness of the corn as well. We did get some local corn, like in the cob, still in the husk, but my mom is cooking that up tomorrow. So I decided to just get this cheaper stuff to use in the salad today. And I think I'll do four of these cobs and then probably just freeze these other ones to use as a, at a later date. And before we even start to prep these, important thing to do first is just to pick off any of the little hairs or pieces of husk that you might see. Because those aren't that appetizing to eat. Huh. 
<laughs> Team Fury. Guys, it's not a competition. Unless you make it one. Oh, Gyro Dreams of Sushi. I love that show too. Yeah, a lot of these are on Netflix. Netflix actually has a great little food show section. Chef's Table, really good one as well. Hi. Hello. Hi. How are you? Good. Oh, you're not working without streaming? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You are streaming. Hi. <laughs> I was just showing her the other side. Okay. Sammy? Here's my for a bike ride. Oh, okay. Thanks. You get home from a long day of work and food is still not done. Typical, right, Rook? Takes forever. I know, I was going to say you're in here pretty late, man. But you are here nonetheless. I think that's the important thing. This stream makes you feel like you should have married a chef. Honestly, greatest pleasure in life is good food. So simple. Okay, so this is where we're using the mandolin again. I know, very interesting, right? And I just learned this the other day at work. Right, we're getting fresh corn now, obviously in BC. And one of the guys was prepping corn. I think we're putting them into the clams right now. Our fresh little neck clam dish. And he was using a mandolin to prep the corn. So what he was doing was make it as thick as the kernels are. So I might need to do the second largest. And then you just slide the corn down and it takes off all the kernels really easily. And just keep doing that around all the sides of the corn until you have all the kernels off. And this way it's a lot cleaner than trying to hold the corn on the cob like this and cut the kernels off, or typically they just fly everywhere when you do this. So I really wanted to show you guys this new way to get kernels off of the corn cob. Just for your few minutes you missed yesterday, long hours for the next month. It's okay, Rook. We love having you here whenever you're able to. <laughs> Nike, I'm just here for the food. You made orange shrimp and Caribbean rice bowls for dinner. That sounds good. What's something cheap you could make tomorrow? You're a student, so budget is hella limited. Mmm. Yeah, I was gonna say something with rice. So like maybe do a burrito bowl or something. Like burritos can be really inexpensive to make. Most of the ingredients are inexpensive. So let's do a test run here. I think we can go a little bit thicker. I don't think we went deep enough there. So let me turn it to the thickest setting and see what we end up with. Hot water, that's lunch, I love it. I've never gone through like the struggle. Sorry, I don't want to go too far in. So now, you know you've gone too far when you start to see those hard pieces of the kernel. So let me give up on this side and let me just retest with a fully intact piece, which I think that's pretty much perfect. You can see we're like just getting down to where that bottom of the kernel is. Rice and beans and your choice of meat is probably the cheapest thing. That's what I was gonna say, Rook. And tortillas are really inexpensive too. This 
try to look at your corn on the cob, see if there's any parts that you can touch up and not waste as much, but be careful because I think it could easily get stuck when you get to a part that looks like that. So that was honestly pretty easy. Corn tastes really nice and sweet too. I just tried a little piece. So let's move on. Put it in the microwave and make it popcorn. I don't think that would work, Tris. So the thing about popcorn is it's dried. So the reaction from the steam with the hot oil is what makes it pop. Trueness, how are you? Oxo makes a cool corn shucker, but it's a one-use tool. Oh, it's a one-use tool? Why wouldn't they make that? You've had a daily diet of Rotel. <laughs> Probably is faster to use a knife. I think I was going pretty slow. And I just don't like picking up all the corn kernels after when I use a knife. So I thought I'd show you guys something new. I don't know if it works that good. Like, let me... I mean, that's me trying to take a bite. So I think we did get down far enough. Move on over. Plus, you don't have to clean the slicer. I mean, it's pretty easy to clean the mandolin. A little bit of soap and a rinse. Good to go. They make a lot of dumb food stuff. It's true, chef. Oh my god, this one I saw the other day on Amazon when I was looking for a fish spatula. They make a plastic spatula with a little probe off the side of it that's a thermometer like what how would that be accurate so like you lift up your piece of food and the probe goes right into it to take the temp ridiculous sounds like don't even show me that <laughs> because the corn cob is so big i'm honestly not scared of slicing my fingers off guys you just have to be aware of where all your digits are. I find when you're more scared of the mandolin is where you're more prone to injury. And if it feels like it's getting stuck, just give it a reverse and don't even attempt it. That's how you avoid injuries. Laser thermometers, yes, those are so much fun. Yeah, either laser or instant read, always a good idea. But something built in to something like a spatula, I don't see how that's gonna be really accurate. Okay, so now, like I said, we I don't know if we have to cook this, guys. Usually corn is like pretty starchy and not as juicy and sweet, but this stuff's really nice. Like as soon as I eat it, it just like bursts with sweetness into my mouth. So maybe I won't even cook it. Maybe I'll just quickly dress it with like a little bit of lime and olive oil. Quick little salad of sorts or a little marination, as you will. The days of awesome infomercials that have cool kitchen tools. Yeah, it's over. Let me just transfer this into this one liter container and then we'll kind of just shake up the corn. So if your corn is really fresh like this stuff, you don't necessarily have to cook it. Make sure you do taste it though, to make sure it's not overly starchy and more sweet. It's all about non-stick pans now. See, 
I am off the nonstick pan game and onto the cast iron game instead, which I find a lot better. But you do have to take care of cast iron a lot more. Yeah, this is like a peaches and cream, right? So usually that variety is really nice and sweet. Thanks for the host, Trueness. Okay. And then after this, we can quickly julienne up the pepper. And then smash our cubers. And quickly make up our dressing. I have a little bit left over from last week. And it was made with lemon, but since we're doing Mexican food, I'm going to switch to lime for the top up of the rest of the recipe. Actually, you know what I'm going to do is just use a little bit of this white wine vin. Since I'm doing lime in the dressing, just a bit, maybe a couple teaspoons worth. And then some olive oil. And just give that a little shake. Actually, maybe a touch of salt too. Salt is always a necessity with corn and with sweet stuff. Gotta get that balance. So that way it's kind of pre-seasoned, even though we didn't cook it. I think that's an important step. And just give that a little shake. And then we'll let that kind of just marinate together. Look at the liquid already coming out of there. And then we'll put that on top of the salad pretty much right before we want to serve. So into our peppers. And let's just see how are our, our avocados doing. So some of them are thawing and some are still like rock hard. So I guess we're doing guac at the end of the stream today, guys. got about an hour and a half left maybe a little bit less maybe a little bit more all you want to do is boom, 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 boom. just shake that corn that song gets me amped up like every time i hear it so thank you for posting that nike whoa could have used the sweet and smoky maple salt wow oh crap just calling me out and i love that you know what? I could have used that and it would have been delicious, I'm sure. That little smoky aspect would definitely complement the chipotle pepper that we marinated the beef with. Okay, so now this is the way I like to break down peppers. I like to cut all around the core. So cut as close as you can to the core on the one side, flip it over cut along the other side and keep doing that hopefully you don't get too many seeds everywhere and then I always like to use the bottom as well trim off anything that you can use and then you end up with the core and the seeds intact and that way you don't get as many pepper seeds everywhere vegan chick with the sub thank you girl and welcome to the squad as if you are weren't already part of it whether you're a sub or not if you're here at least once a week watching a stream for however amount of time you're still part of the squad but now you get to enjoy the onion emote if you put the frozen avos in a metal container and make it float on water, ah, uh, to defrost it, yeah. I mean, I'm not in a huge rush, but if it comes to the end of the stream and they're still not thawed, then 
we will resort to something like that. How was your Buddha bowl yesterday, by the way? I saw the photo of it and it looked delicious. You only show up to work on your trolling skills. Yeah, typical armor. And you know what? I love you for that. Someone's got to do it. Most well-behaved troll I ever did know. You recently watched a YouTube video where a guy won a contest by eating like 15 Carolina Reapers. I don't think that would be a contest I would want to win. Like, think about the after effects of that. Like, would you even have a butt left after your body tries to get rid of that? Like, that would literally be a burning ring of fire. Terrifying. Very unpleasant. Unless you're getting a mass amount of money, I don't know if it's worth it to do that to your body. Oh, I gotta resub the the uh, hype then, or sorry, I gotta do the tier two sub maybe. I can do that, man. You don't have to do that. one hot ass on the toilet exactly so now when i say julienne guys that means slicing really nice and thin and so because our corn is kind of like square in size i think it's important to create a contrast when you're doing ingredients for salads so you want like something that's longer something that's cubed make a couple different shapes yeah, play Disco Inferno while you poop. <laughs> Dante, how are you? And I don't know if we need all these peppers, but I will use them all. I don't have any other plans for them this week, so might as well use them while they're fresh. You have a 40% off code, Rook, for hot sauce? That is epic, man. Yeah, honestly, I would love to try it, but I don't think I'd even be able to use them. But mind you, Tabasco I don't find really spicy. You just cooked up some dinner, Dante. What did you cook up, man? Death, thank you for gifting that. I said you didn't have to. Totally could have done it after the stream today. Honestly, man. I'm gonna make you the best cookies ever. The guy was almost passing out at one drop of hot sauce. Is it even worth it? Vessa Floored? Vessa Floored? Thanks for the follow and welcome in. <laughs> Stream Elements is like, nah, dude. Today we are not. Chopped up some chicken breasts, bell peppers, and onions, balsamic vinegar. Threw it in a skillet and into the oven. That sounds delicious. So simple. So good. It's nice and healthy too. Oh, the 
the peanut chutney. I will click on that link right now. Make sure I open it in my browser. Do you have a dosa recipe as well that you recommend? Oh crap. Yeah, ban elements. <laughs> I've had enough. Or at least give them a timeout. person we're all allowed to yell at because they will literally say nothing back. I think I would really enjoy dosas because I do enjoy making crepes. But I've never made a dosa. I've only eaten a couple. So I know there is a little bit of skill involved there. I think after we finish cutting up these peppers, we should definitely check on the beef and see how it's cooking up. See if it's gonna be ready in time, if it's getting nice and tender in there, if maybe the liquid needs a little top up. I might add a touch of tomato paste as well that I pulled from the freezer just to use it up. Oh, I love tamarind too. I am into it. What if there were purple peppers? And there might be purple peppers that exist. I don't think I've ever seen any though. I'm just gonna munch on those pepper pieces. Those are Kate snacks. Staying healthy. What? Food walk in India? I'm in. Hello, Josu. <laughs> yeah, take you. Okay, let's start to make our salad. How do I want to do this? I might do it on like a diagonal. I'm gonna put the peppers in the middle. Pile them up nice and high. A lot of peppers here. But I like to have leftover salads for lunch. That way it's already prepped up and you just gotta dress it the next day. Be warned, things will be too spicy and too sweet. Okay, that's good to know. I'll keep that in mind. Perfect two lines. Let me scroll up and see that. You could make it three lines if you want. No, it looks good, Death. I am good with that. My man. There we go so far. So colorful. Yeah, at least you were able to come in for some chopping, like right on time, Dante. Maybe we'll give the corn a little shake again. And now I'm gonna take out the beef and we're gonna see what's going on in there. Like I said, I'm just gonna add this touch of tomato paste, I think. It's like a third of the can left. Yeah, all the Indian street foods, I'm sure are unreal. Oh, oh it smells good in here. Where's the beets? I don't have any beets today. We did beets in the salad yesterday, though. Ta-da! 
that's where we're at right now. We should just give it a little poke. And it's getting there. I'm gonna cut off the string from the outside of the beef. I think that can be a little deceiving because it's keeping it together. So this is an inside round roast of beef. And I paid 10 bucks for this. It was on sale, which is why I picked it up. Really good quality AAA beef. And let's see. So I am able to pull the outside off a bit, but we should definitely give this a little baste with the sauce in here. So I browned it up at the very start of the stream. And this was marinated previously with some chipotle peppers, probably about two tablespoons worth of the chipotles in adobo, which this is what that looks like. Just comes in a can typically. Really, really good stuff. Try and get the stuff that is made in Mexico or from Mexico. And then some of this stuff. So achiote paste, which is a natto seed. This is what makes those Mexican braised meats really nice and red and orange. So I mixed some of that in there as well. And I think that's it. So really, really simple. And then we browned off the beef, added a can of beer to deglaze the pot, and then put it in the oven. So I'm gonna taste this piece. Mm-hmm. Actually really tasty. Pretty spicy too. I like it. Opterix, yeah, cleaning the pot must be fun. But luckily, Sammy ordered me this Barkeeper's Friend. This is a cleaner that works really well for enamel pots to get any of those brown pieces off, but usually it doesn't stick too bad. Shots of pure cap capsicum, capsicum. Same chipotles you use, yas. So good. They have been Rook and Kate approved. So let's just drizzle some of the sauce back over here. Make sure it doesn't dry out too much. And then because there is this amount of sauce, we're gonna add in the other beef that's already been shredded. And that way it won't be dry either. So it's gonna be really nice and saucy to put into the burrito. A natto, that might actually be what they use to color cheese. I haven't looked into it much, but that would make sense. Okay, let us mix in our tomato paste. Martin Waden, thank you for the follow and welcome in. So this is just gonna add a little bit of richness to the sauce. Definitely don't need to do this. Yes, Rook, yeah, great minds think alike. Barkeeper's friend, guys. If you have a pan that you absolutely destroyed by cooking something in it one day, apparently that stuff is supposed to fix it for you. I haven't even used it yet, but I'll definitely be trying it on this pot after a stream today. How about some chocolate? That would be unreal. Or even doing a little bit of coffee. Really, really good too. I don't have to worry too much about mixing in the tomato paste completely at this point because we will be obviously shredding the beef later and getting a better mix on everything that's in the pot. So 
I'm pretty happy with how this is looking so far. Try and get a closer look. Really nice dark sauce in there. Put it back in the oven. I think it'll definitely be done within the next half an hour. And then we can just leave the oven off while we kind of assemble the burritos and finish the rice and stuff. Let the beef rest up. Secret ingredient in Taco Bell meat is chocolate. What? Almost like a mole. Yeah, exactly. Trueness. That's another thing that I've never made before. Well, that's a lie. I did help make one in culinary school. But that was way too long ago. And yes, it did have like 30 different ingredients in it. Really crazy. But the sauce is amazing. Firecracker brats. I have not heard of this. Flash cooking despazibro. I love that. Turn the oven to max and get it done. And have some nice tough meat. That could work for some things, but definitely not something that needs to be slow cooked. Okay, these, look at these. These, these have got to be organic, right guys? So all of these cukes are from the garden. This is a Persian cucumber or Middle Eastern cucumber, whatever you want to call it. And you can see how it doesn't have any of those spikes on it compared to like your typical pickling cucumber, which has these crazy little spiky thorns on it. Make it really hard to pick them. So you really don't want to touch those. It does hurt, but Persian cucumbers don't have that. Their skin is so nice and smooth. And then you don't even have to peel these. So let's give these, maybe I'll only use these two. Let's give those a quick wash and then we'll get to smashing, I guess which maybe I'll do in the mortar and pestle. I'm not really sure how to go about this cucumber smashing. But apparently it's trending right now. to figure out where that discord sound is coming from because it's bugging me. Okay, that should fix it. Okay, let's trim off the ends. India cucumbers. Well, how come they call it Persian cucumbers? That's craziness then. Okay, I'm going to slice them in half and let's, let's see what kind of difference we get when we cut them in half. Pretty big difference actually. So this one might not be as spiky and you can eat the skin, but look how many more seeds there are. Compared to our spiky one, the seeds are so much smaller and there's more flesh. You can choose your own destiny, guys. Definitely not cucumbers. I will take your word for it then. I just find that funny how they call them Persian cucumbers. Like that's all they're called here in North America. But little do we know, they probably don't even grow there. Understood.
All right, well, since Sammy's not here, I honestly feel like using his new hammer to smash these is gonna be epic. So what we need is just a freezer bag or something to protect your cutting board and stop everything from kind of flying everywhere. Let's just put those in there. Seal it up just in case. Chili de Arbol. I have heard of that. But yeah, I'm not super familiar with it. Okay, let's put this hammer to the test. Can you really smash it? Like, is that the point of it? Maybe we'll do it this side. It might be easier to smash. Just get your hammer out. I'm scared. I think I'll just cut it into pieces after it's smashed. The camera's moving, it's true. Welcome to Kate's kitchen. You never know what's gonna happen. Match the skin side. It seemed like it was really hard to get through. I don't know. I mean, it definitely broke up the seeds and stuff. Interesting. I know this is like typically an Asian style of salad. Mmm. Thin long cucumbers that you eat with salt and chili powder. Sounds so good. Simple is always better. Okay, now let's just cut it up bite size. You will do like little triangles. Be rustic with it. I mean, we already smashed it. The destruction has been done. Alright guys, so question of the day, since we are nearing up the end of the stream, what is your favorite Mexican food to consume? We can also include Tex-Mex in here. Let's not be overly picky. One more time. What is your favorite Mexican food to consume? R.I.P. Cucumber Yet. Never even seen it coming, guys. It could be either like a food or an entire dish. Let me know. This is my way to kind of get to know you guys and what you like to eat. And maybe in turn, I can use that when I create my menus for the week. Enchiladas, nice one. Opteryx. Yeah, Betty always made those when we were younger. So good. Your favorite food ever, Nike, is tacos. Honestly, I think I have to vote tacos as well. Because after having the real deal, like traditional Mexican tacos, those are something that I think about often but are very hard to find people that make them correctly. Caldo de mariscos. That's with shrimp, right? I think mariscos are shrimp. So how is that prepared? 
trueness. Let's just wipe up our cucumber juices. You like Mexican baked beans. Oh, nice one. I think we're going to put the rice on to cook before we finish up with the salad dressing. That way everything can kind of be finished around the same time. So we're gonna go in with the corn now. Mexican tortilla soup, oh my gosh, pozole. So good, Chance. You have a feeling that you've only sampled about 30% of Mexican food, yeah. I have a feeling of the same thing, Opterix. Mmm. This corn actually does taste a lot better now that it's marinated. Good call, Kate. Good call. I don't know if we need all of it. I think we should reserve some of the corn to be able to put it into the burrito if someone wants that. There we go, guys. Hell yeah. Nice colorful salad. Baked weed beans. <laughs> what? Double decker tacos and burritos. Preferably the three foot long kind. You are nuts though. Mm, a seafood soup. That sounds delicious. Simple nachos. Always a good idea. Pork verde with hot tortillas. Oh, chili pork verde. So do you think that they use some of the salsa verde in there with the pork? Okay, like I said, let's put our rice on now since it has to cook for about 15 minutes. And then once that gets going, we'll finish up with our creamy lime herb dressing. Nice rook. Nice win, man. Then you know what? It's about that time where we turn on some lights in here. Selena, thank you for the host. You know, the typical rice pot used on stream. Oh no, box. <laughs> We're on a losing streak now. Don't do it. Stop now. American taco, but nothing beats carne asada with just onions, lime, and cilantro and a corn tortilla. Nothing. Like the onions have to be there raw. Even if you don't like onions, you don't even notice it. Is the white onions, which the Mexican use a lot compared to the yellow onions that North Americans like. The white onions are really nice and sweet and mild. See if we can push these down too while we're over here. Yeah. Okay, so to start the rice, we're gonna turn our pot onto medium high and pour our kernels into the pot dry. And then we're gonna kind of toast the rice kernels before we boil them. And I find that toasting gives it a little bit more of a nutty flavor and it also helps it to fluff up and not get cooked down as much. You have to admit, yeah, the sound of a sizzling hot fajita plate in a restaurant, like, as soon as that comes out of the kitchen, everyone's just like, ah. like they're bringing something like golden or magical through the restaurant and the smell. I think the smell of the sizzling fajita plate really gets you too. Cilantro is the main reason you stopped eating pho as a kid? No. What about Mexi dogs? Bacon wrapped hot dogs with queso? I am in. What type of rice? We're, we are using jasmine rice today. Show you 
you guys in a sec once more of the kernels get toasted. But usually when you start with rice, it's a little bit like transparent, right? Yeah, but when you toast it, the kernel turns more white or opaque. And that's how you know it's been toasted. So you want about half of your kernels to look like that before you pour any liquid in there. And then you will get like a crazy rapid sizzle. And I pretty much keep the rice on high heat. You can cook it covered or uncovered until all of the liquid has been absorbed. Bourbon Street steak at Applebee's comes out sizzling. I don't think I've ever got one of those sizzling hot plates before, and I don't know why. Yeah, all of the steak talk making us too hungry. Whoa, your first hot pot, Rook? Hot pot is a really fun experience. Definitely go with a bunch of people if you can. Bacon wrapped grilled hot dog with queso blanco sauce. That sounds so good, guys. Just go by yourself and try out four to five types of meat. Yes, that's the most fun part. All of the condiments and accompaniments. Boil the water with some aromatic flowers such as lavender or jasmine. Add some cinnamon to it. Once the oil from the flowers are released, use the hot water to cook the rice after draining the flowers. That sounds really beautiful. I'm like really delicate. Oh crap. This is what kings ate. I really like that idea. You can really infuse a lot of flavor into water by using different ingredients, right? Why not? You never know if you don't try. Okay, let me look at this dressing recipe. So the base of the dressing can be sour cream or yogurt. So obviously this is not dairy free. Aromatherapy and dinner at the same time. <laughs> yeah, totally. So sour cream base for that creaminess. There is still a little bit of olive oil in here. And then white wine vinegar as well as I'm gonna do two limes juiced, but otherwise it's one lemon juiced. A quarter cup of chopped fresh herb leaves. Because I do this in a blender, I don't pre-chop the herbs, so save yourself a little bit of time and labor there. Then we need a little bit of garlic, maybe some chives for that little onion kick, and then just some honey and salt and pepper to season it up afterwards. Okay, I think the rice is nicely toasted at this point. I'm gonna pour in the liquid and listen for that sizzle. And I always like to turn it to high to get it boiling right away. there is that. Soak the rice in the water first and then it washes the starch out. Yeah, I never do that step either. Yeah, never do that for sushi rice. That is true. Hello Top, thank you for the follow. Welcome in. Oh, I have a shit ton of hair and you know what guys? I'm getting a haircut on Friday don't know what I'm doing yet. Okay, let's get our ingredients out. 
for our dressing and we're almost there. Almost food time. I like to do a mix of sour cream and yogurt because my yogurt is fat free and my sour cream is like 14% fat. So get that a little bit of balance. Shave it GI Jane. Yeah, just rock it. That would be weird, Trist, I think. I don't know if you guys would uh, like that at all. All of the herbs. So many and look at this petrified lime i don't know if we'll get any juice out of it but we might as well try so this is the leftover dressing from last time Turn the camera down so you can kind of see what it's going to look like. Oh, it's like got those nice herb chunks in it, but yeah, it's still creamy. Got a really nice fresh flavor too. It's not super, super heavy. So let's bring our blender top over here and start to fill this guy. Cut it six inches up and get an 80s perm. I don't even think I need the perm, Trist. I think it perms itself. Farrah Fawcett, yeah. Full afro, you guys are awesome. <laughs> there are a lot of options. So we need half a cup total of dairy. So we'll do a quarter cup of each one. And you know what? I will make sure that I dump this into the blender as well to mix it all up. Why did I grab a fork? You will vote the haircut. I don't know if I trust that one, Tris. I could end up really bad. Your sister got a perm in 10th grade and her classmates told her that she had a rat's nest. Wow. Man, kids are so harsh. I would look great with an afro. Thanks. You know what? I'll take that as a compliment. Afro at 10,000 followers? You can hold me to that. I'd be down. Yeah, full afro, not even an option. The hair does what it wants. There we goes. A ham sandwich. <laughs> All of this effort is pointless. What if we don't want a ham sandwich today? Oh yeah, there's definitely days, Trist, where it's like, I am sick of my long hair. But honestly, living somewhere so humid, I either have to have it really short or really long. Just because taming this mane is not really an option. So I find that having it long enough to put it into a ponytail is the easiest. I don't think I would like my hair short if I left it curly all the time. Could have used the hot sandwich as a late night snack. Okay, I'll take you up on that offer then. 
<laughs> Have I had it above my shoulders? Yes. I have like shaved half of my head before and had like a crazy Miley Cyrus haircut before she even had it. Okay, so just a little bit of cilantro since my dad hates it. Don't want to overpower it. Just got the call from Cheddar's. You start tomorrow morning. Yay, Nike. Congrats. You deserve that. I'm so happy. And I'm gonna add a little bit of mint for freshness. Nice little sprig. I do like tarragon, guys. That's a good option as well. Photos are it never happened. I swear I showed you guys this photo before. If you go to like the very bottom, of my personal Instagram, you'll find it, man. It'll be there. You'll see it. The small crisp things, or whatever those are. Nah, it's a restaurant, is what he's talking about. Yeah, thanks for all the info on the rice. We always like to learn new stuff here. So that was... A little bit of chives going in there. I'm gonna pick a bunch tomorrow now that I'm finished with that bag. And we do have some parsley here still, which I wanna save some for Thursday for our chicken and dumpling soup. In England, cheddars are a crisp with biscuit thing. Oh, is that where you're from, is England? Welcome in. Okay, our rice is boiling away. And I'm just gonna add a couple sprigs of thyme, taking off the stem, and then I'm just gonna pop out quickly and go grab some fresh basil from the garden. Because the basil really helps bring all of these herbs together. That's what I found last time I made this at least. We'll be back in 30 seconds. really nice handful of fresh basil and because it's going into a salad dressing I'm not really worried about it being a little bit duller in color it's gonna get blended up anyways and it's still gonna stay green please bring bacon ham spam and twinkies I love that requests from India you guys heard it here first so now let's try let's see this line look at this thing just petrified. Is there anything left in here? There actually is. And an easy way to loosen up the juice and citrus, just give it a roll on the countertop. And that kind of loosens everything up. Yeah, what would customs say if you brought 10 pounds of bacon to India? They would for sure confiscate it. You're not allowed to bring meat to different countries. Okay, our rice is almost there. Let's start juicing. 
Oh my gosh, Trist, in and out. I make sure every time I go to the States that I go at least once. And I really, really like it. Oh, Sammy just texted me. He's going to be late for dinner. He went all the way up the mountain. What a crazy guy. Yeah, in and out as far as like burger chains goes, I like how simple their menu is. Like that's all you're getting is like a proper burger and some amazing fries. I am okay with this. Rook, they're about to build an in and out right across the street from you. That would be so dangerous for me. Definitely a big burger lover. Yeah, trying to work off the wife saver, probably. Just having fun with his bike. Such a nice hill for a ride. The trails are nice and wide. Oh my gosh, Shake Shack. Really good burgers too. I think those are my two favorite American burger fast food places. Okay, liquid is almost cooked out. Just a little bit more sizzle and then we'll take that off of the heat, cover it with a lid so it can finish steaming. And then we're pretty much there. Oh, and we have to add the black beans in. So let's go over, put the black beans on top now. There might've been some liquid in the black beans as well. They opened up a Five Guys just two blocks from you. Yeah, must resist. It's terrifying, honestly. Okay, let's add our liquids in now. So we need a quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil. And only a tablespoon of the white wine bin. So not that much because we have the citrus juice as well for acidity. I butchered my eyebrows at one time. Wow, Trist. I said that it took me like six or seven years to grow these back. Those good old high school days, I think most women can relate. Okay, let's measure out a tablespoon. That was very honest of you to say. And you know what, I'm not offended, so I don't really care. I've never eaten at Five Guys. So I don't know what all the hype is about. Late Pendleton walk. At least you're still walking them even though you're busy, Rook. See you in a little bit. And then we just need a little bit of garlic. Let's take our rice off. And then cover that and it'll finish steaming. Salad dress and making. Exactly American. So same style of creamy herb dressing that we made last week, except this time, instead of lemon juice, we added lime to go with the Mexican flavors. So add in your garlic, let the blender do the work. So you can just put the whole clove in there. And then we just need that little bit of honey or whatever sweetener you want. I think I'm gonna go, actually, Let's just add the honey. Mine's a little bit crystallized, but since we're blending, it'll definitely blend in, so I'm not too worried. Yeah, thick eyebrows, a blessing. Do you get epizote? What is epizote? I feel like I've heard of that word, but please refresh my memory. So two teaspoons of honey, because you do need to balance out that acidity. Yeah, I didn't mind the short hair, but it did take more effort than having it long because I always tried to like straighten it or style it. I've never left it just curly. So I'm scared to cut it all off and then I maybe wouldn't like it. It's too risky, Trist. And then 
we just need a little bit of salt and pepper. If this is your first time making the dressing, I would mix up the dressing first and then taste it and add your salt and pepper. Epizote is a Mexican herb used most often for seasoning beans. I have never heard of it, but there is a little Mexican market downtown. It just takes me like an hour to get there. So maybe I'll make a trip one day and check it out. Crystal Weiss. I do love Crystal Weisses. They're so easy to drink. So I think this recipe is good with like around a half teaspoon of salt added. And if you want, just some fresh cracked pepper. I've never heard of raising canes. Okay, so that is it for all of our ingredients. Let's go over and blend this guy up. What are we at for time? 5.45. So last things that we have to do is pull the beef. So I'm gonna just turn the oven off. We'll pull the beef after this. I have some pulled pork that has been previously made. We gotta heat that up as well. We're gonna keep it separate from the beef. And then I think we're pretty much good to go on making the burritos. Yeah, Posh's face was so dark and ginger still, Tris. I don't know. I did like that hairstyle, but Betty also has short hair like that. So the thing that I got all the time was, oh, you look so much like your mom, which is not a bad thing, but that's like all people said all the time. So it got kind of weird and annoying. Top donation gets to pick the new hairstyle. Yeah, Mohawk. Please don't. Okay, let's blend this up. We will just let that go for a minute or two. John Lithgow. Okay, where are we? Bay leaves and maybe pork are used. If you donate a hundred bucks, can you pick my hairstyle? I don't think so, man. Not even money can sway me. I think I'm just gonna trim up my hair. I still want to grow it a little bit longer. But maybe when I do decide to cut it short, we can do something like that. Oh, he starred in the movie. Okay, so one person here knows what Raising Cane is. Hilarious. Okay, let's turn it up a little bit. Jalal, thank you for the biddies. That is much appreciated. Cut it off and give it to Sammy, yep. <laughs> we'll make him a little wig of sorts. the really nice creamy green color you always end up with donated to locks of love yeah totally would be like donated for a wig or something to do with cancer you can't cut it again because you'll be bald Rook. yeah what a great way to cut your hair like that why not give it to someone in need Jalal with the 15 cupcakes. Now I want some dessert. Does Sammy have a matching apron? Well, he doesn't have a cook with Kate one. 
but he does have like a really nice orange one and he did have a green one but someone when we left vancouver someone at the restaurant actually like stole it before we left and we didn't know who did it so we just kind of chopped that up as a loss terrible i tell ya so there we go there's our dressing almost smooth let's give it a try to make sure it's nice and balanced Mm-hmm. the lime juice is really nice in there and none of the herbs really overpower each other either and i think the addition of the lime juice was perfect keeping with the mexican theme mint chocolate chip ice cream liz how are you the ice queen yet yeah, made it out of the shower whoa almost poured the dressing everywhere that was dangerous guys side by our salad so like I said we just have to finish off the beef why don't I pull that out now and also prep up the little bit of pulled pork that I have so I'm gonna heat it up on the stove top I have about like a liter's worth so that was chilling in the freezer for some time you're not even home yet. No, Liz. What is going on? What do I want to use? I guess a pair of tongs is an option. You miss your bed and you're hungry. Man, those are some tough feels, I tell ya tough feels. I would love to send you foods. I think you would crush a burrito. Biggest burrito of life. We got some nice fat there in the bottom of our pulled pork container. So that's going to help it not be dry when we reheat it. And then I have this chilling in the freezer, which I think is like leftover braising liquid from some kind of meat. So let me just try it and see what flavor it has. I'm just going to add a little bit to the pot. Hmm. I think it's just like a pork braising liquid. Maybe beef? Something rich and delicious. So we'll just add a couple of spoonfuls of that. And I think keeping the pork plain in flavor is a good option for people because the beef is a little bit spicy. I think that's good. This is pulled pork. I would, it was previously made and then I just froze the leftover. So that's always a good option to do if you're feeling like burritos. Yeah, too slow. It's okay, Nike's got you. So let's put this on the back burner. Put that on to a good medium high heat to get it started. And now let's check out the beef. Da, da, da. Yum. Into it. Add sun dried tomato sea salt for the pulled pork. Yeah, let's taste it and add salt if we need. That would actually be a pretty good salt to add. 
I do have an open pack. That other pack is for the giveaway. So let's keep that near us. And then you know what? We're gonna use the tongs for the, from the pork to do the beef too. So look, we're able to easily pull it apart now. So it was slow cooked for, what would I say? Probably three, three and a half hours now. A really nice chipotle sauce with some beer to braise. Larry, welcome in. This is a new name in the chat. Is this your first time here? Your boyfriend and you are getting a Swedish, Swedish massage on Sunday. Well, that will definitely be relaxing. I think you deserve that. Just kind of break the beef apart. It should come apart really easily. I think bite-sized pieces are best. I don't love when braised meats are like completely mashed together. I like to still like see the meat grains and know what I'm eating instead of just like mushy meat. So I like a more chunky pulled pork or beef. And we're gonna mix it with the sauce. This was a top sirloin roast. It was pretty small. Yeah, a beer, some of that pulled pork, and some bread, and you're set. Okay, pork over here. It's just starting to heat up as well. And then, like I said, guys, we also had these leftover containers of, like, a sort of pulled beef, which actually I don't know if I'm going to use. I thought Sammy like pulled the beef really nicely for it, but it doesn't look like it. And this is actually just a piece of like roasted brisket. So that's really tender. I'm just gonna bump it up. So burritos are a good thing if you want to use up some stuff from the freezer. Brisket is super delicious and fatty. That's not going to dry out at all. But I think I'm going to leave that other container of beef out. And maybe do something else with it. So let's mix this in. While it's still warm, let the residual heat heat it up. The beef is already cooked, so we don't have to worry about the cross-contamination. refrigerated massages. <laughs> That's hilarious. And honestly, we need to give this a try. And real quick, let's wipe off our tongs. Let's just go stir the pork because I hear it sizzling. that is honestly perfect. I don't have to add anything. But guess what? We do have to finish off with our guac. Just pulling everything else out of the fridge right now for the burritos. And that is okay because the guac will not take us long at all. pretty 
simple guac. Let's just cover this. We'll put it back in the oven for now. The pork is heating up nicely. Definitely you wanna make sure we don't dry it out. So I'm gonna let it kind of carry over cooking and almost steam to finish heating it up. And that way we won't lose any more moisture. Can't forget about the guac, guys. So important. Thou shall not. Okay, so finally, there's that, that, we have a lime here, and then I have some hot sauce. That's what I like to put in my guac recipe. It's a really simple recipe, literally just avocados, like two to three large ones, one lime juiced, a clove of garlic if you want, and then two teaspoons of hot sauce and salt and pepper. Sometimes I add in chopped tomato if I'm just eating the guac with chips, but since we have the diced tomato on the side to go into the burrito, I think it's totally okay if we leave it out of the guac. Let's get into this little guy. I am wearing Tom's. Good eye, Nike. These toms have gone a lot of places with me. I bought these when I was first starting traveling after high school. And the first place they went with me was to Thailand and Laos and Bali. And they survived that place. And then I did end up bringing them with me on my Europe trip as well. Love these toms. Yeah, the avocados, they're starting to look edible, it's true. And some of them are still like a little bit frozen. That's nuts. At least this one is really nice though. Moggin, thanks for the follow. I'm just gonna use the potato masher but you can use a fork as well or whatever you have available to you fork vindaloo I do love vindaloo oh you like toms do they make them for guys I can't remember You're a little too large to wear them. They make you look like a fire truck. <laughs> okay, so I like my guac a little bit chunky too, guys. But if you like your smooth, then go ahead and mash it up really well. Ad hoc food, welcome in. Thanks for the follow. Lots of new follows today, guys. This is great. Working towards that 1K. Yeah, a fire truck or fryer truck. Either one works great. Oh, the large priest in Robin Hood. Okay, I didn't even know what you were talking about. I was like, I think he meant fire truck. How this is looking. I think we're good. Scrape off 
whatever is left on here. There's no waste at all. Fire truck Bidvilu. I am in. <laughs> You just look funny. Yeah, either way. I think half of this lime is going to be sufficient because it is quite juicy. Look at all that delicious stuff. And wherever there's lime, you always need a good amount of salt to contrast. Lime and salt match made in heaven almost. And the avocado is very fatty, right? So you also need salt to cut that fat. And last thing going in is just a little bit of hot sauce to kick it up. And this is a homemade chipotle hot sauce. It has lime in it. It has some cumin, obviously chipotles. And it's not super, super spicy. It just has a nice smoky kick. Yeah, red onion can also be an option too. I just don't like the aftertaste of red onion that much. So I don't often add it in. I feel like it's pretty strong. But it does give a nice color contrast. And yeah, exactly. The lime helps the avocado stay really nice and green. So mix that until it's smooth. It's pretty good to me. Maybe a touch more salt, guys. And then I think we're good. Then it's burrito time. Maybe I'll put some black pepper in there too. Really, really basic guac. But we have a lot of other flavors going on in our burrito today. Avocado is called butter fruit there. That makes sense. Yeah, add some of Rook's hot sauce and you will die. Okay, one more taste. Yep. Really nice and fresh. You hit that sweet spot. Arne, how are you? You just made guac on Sunday? Yes. Guac is good with so many things. Okay. Honestly, I need to hit the bathroom one more time before we plate up. But we're pretty much there, guys. Thanks for chilling this whole time. And Zachary, thanks for the follow. I'll be back in like 30 seconds. Okay, let's make our burrito station, guys. Delicious salsa verde. It's coming up. Bring it over right now. Okay, 
here's our two salsas, which I'm sure need a little mix up quickly. I should probably put most of this just onto a sheet and make a little burrito dressing station. So there's our salsa roja. Papaya hot sauce. That sounds good. Here is the verde. I think I made this like maybe a couple months back already. I just made a big batch and then froze it so it wouldn't go bad. taste, see how it is still. Mm. Love the cilantro flavor there. Try the roja as well. Nice little roasted tomato flavor. Not that spicy, which is good. And now our diced up tomatoes, our shaved cabbage, you can use green or red, whatever you want, or you can just do shredded lettuce. Mmm, mango and habanero, such a good hot sauce. Yeah, all of you guys are on the same wavelength. And then we have our old cheddar and white aged cheddar for our cheese for the burrito. Yeah, there ain't no iceberg lettuce, it's true. <laughs> Hell no. So there we go. You're bored and hungry. Best place to come, Mr. Penguin. Oh my God, Fiscal, I just saw you. How are you? It has honestly been a while. We're just getting ready to assemble some burritos for Trist's request. We got a couple different kinds of tortillas. This one, jalapeno cheese. Thanks, Dempsters. And then we also got the sun-dried tomato. But I think I am down for the jalapeno cheese. Give me the cheese. This is supposed to be a tear top. There we go. Definitely put our tortilla on a plate though and put everything on it on the plate because this is going to get messy indeed. Is off the hair. Wow, Trist. I don't know if I can do it, man. So busy. Your daughter starts school in September. So much going on. Aw. Well, I hope everything goes well. Yeah, terrible idea. Okay, so first thing that I always like to start with is obviously the meat in the burrito. And I think I wanna start with the beef just because it has the most flavor. The pork is a little bit more plain, not as spicy, but I wanna see what my original concoction was gonna make. So I'm just gonna go over to the beef. Get a little spoonful of that onto the tortilla and then also grab some of the rice and beans that just need a quick little mix up. So the key here when you're building your burrito, obviously don't overfill your tortilla. Sadly in this aspect, less is probably more. And then you always want to keep everything lined up either vertically or horizontally in the center so that you're still able to roll it up afterwards. Yeah, all Canadian things have to have French on the packaging as well, which is actually pretty cool because when I was working 
at my first job as like a shelf stock little person in the supermarket, I learned quite a few like French food terms. So it's not a bad thing. So literally just plain rice and black beans here. Just some substance. You can add whatever spices or flavorings you want, if you so desire. And this is such a good cheap filler. Especially if you can't afford to eat a lot of meat with your burrito. That's where we're at so far. Just a little bit of both. It can be vertical or horizontal, exactly, but it does depend on when you go to roll it. And then before this cools down, I like my cheese melty. So this is where this comes in handy. You let the hot food slowly melt the cheese. Obviously, this is where it gets fun. Put as much or as little of each ingredient as you want. Yeah, you gotta wear a bib when you're eating burritos. I'm gonna go in with the shaved cabbage now. More beans. All of the beans. I just need to be careful with how much stuff I add. Always overfill your tortilla rook if you want to live dangerously. Now our guac. I think this is going to be overfilled anyways. I'm going to do a little bit of each salsa. You always make the first one too big. Yeah, I always make that mistake too. Oh yeah, I wanted to grill it shut, but I'm running out of time. If you guys wanna use your grill to grill it shut or like a cast iron grill pan, even a panini press works too. It does help when you heat up the tortilla to really seal it shut. And hopefully that will help in it from going everywhere, but that's not usually the case. I don't mind though the nice flavor from the char from the grill. It's already going to not roll. Yeah, just go ham. Exactly. Like, look at this. So, this is how I fold. I always bring in the sides first. Careful how much you bring them in though, because then that's going to make your burrito really short, right? Bring in the sides and then fold the bottom like this. Bring it up. <laughs> Watch all of your fillings spill out. You only eat once a day, that's impressive rip. Try and grip all of your filling, kind of bring it back, and then finish with that roll. And then burritos always need that nice foil on the outside to keep everything together. And that's, I think, one of the funnest part about eating a burrito is getting to peel that away as you munch down. <laughs> Layer it so that the crispy veggies are in between soft fillings. That's a good point. I'm trying to not make too much noise for you guys. Sometimes it's rough though. Huge, so I'm just trying to make it a little bit smaller. Let's come in here. I like when the top of the burrito sticks out a little bit. So let's fold this up. I'm sorry for whoever is using headphones right now. And then I always bring in the one side. And 
and then just give it a little roll shut. And then you got something like that. And that way the juices don't leak all the way down your elbow. Hee <laughs> hee, we did it guys. Cheers, Trist. This is for you, man. ASMR burrito. So best part, when you go to eat it, peel away that first layer of foil so that you don't bite onto it because I don't think that would be very pleasant. It is the heavy duty Reynolds. Yeah, you can tell by the sound, hey? So let's get into this. I don't think my first bite is gonna have much in it. I'll try and give a pretty big bite and see what we're working with. You can bring stuff up now. Are you still Just on a sec, it? guys. Yeah. Okay, well, that's okay. You could have finished. It's fine. Betty's taking away the burrito stuff. This is really good. Yeah, use gold foil. The beef is awesome. The guac and the salsas are really fresh tasting still. Obviously, you don't get much flavor from the rice and the beans. I think the crunch from the cabbage is really, really nice. Let me have another bite and see how the beef really works with everything. Mm-hmm. It's not dry at all. I just got a little bit of cheese in there too which adds that perfect creamy and like salty sharp flavor. Really, really good. All right, Nike, we're gonna go play some league. Have good games and I will see you Thursday, hopefully. Don't eat it, why? The heat is starting to creep up from the beef now in my mouth, but it's not overpowering. I think it's like perfectly spicy for Mexican food. I didn't take a picture. I'll probably cut this one in half off stream and take a picture of it actually cut open. And I'll make sure I post it on Insta. It's true guys, I got too excited because I knew I was behind. I got some hungry peeps. Yeah, Sammy's just coming down the hill now. He's getting that exercise in. Okay guys, who shall we raid today? Chef's about to go on soon. I'm down to do grub truckers. What do you guys think of that? Let's go do the food truck stream. Maybe at one time that'll be us, Sammy and I. Okay, we're gonna go raid grub truckers. I don't know if their chat is like follow only or sub only though. But thank you guys for all of the love today, the biddies, the subs, whether they were gifted or just yourself and all of the new follows. This is amazing. So thanks for all the love and we'll be back Thursday to finish off that chicken broth that we have simmering away on the stove. Chicken and dumpling soup. Really, really good home style recipe. Okay, grub truckers. Ah, it's only intended for mature audiences. We should be good to go in there. Hope you guys have fun in there. I've watched them a couple times before and they're a really good crew. Have a wonderful night, guys. And I hope you have a good day tomorrow. I won't be seeing you. But we'll be back for Thirsty Thursday. Arigato. What is Hosamas? Bye, guys.